Hey guys, this is Dawn. Welcome to Gulf Coast October, and this is a place where I get into all kinds of stuff. Um, but I, I tend to get on kicks, and lately I'm on a painting kick. So that's what I've been doing. I'm getting my canvas wet, because this is a, a canvas from, not Pop Socket, what's it called? Pop Shelf. And they are dry. And all these materials that I got there are dry. I'm just, I can't explain it. It's just, I have to dip everything in water constantly. And yes, I forgot to hit record for a spell, but I'm gonna do exactly what I did. I'm gonna do it again because I wanted to do it again anyway. So I suggest you do what I'm doing right now, but do it twice if you want to copy this technique. But I don't recommend it necessarily. However, if you get your canvases from these cheap places and they're, um, oh, they're not easy to work on, uh, add a lot of water to everything you do. They're just dehydrated. Okay, so um, so yeah, so my name is Dawn. Hello, hi. And uh, I use a blow dryer sometimes so I can hurry up and dry stuff because I'm impatient and acrylic. Sometimes you can work with it when it's wet and sometimes you need it to be dry because I like to paint over layers, layers, layers. And I don't really usually know what I'm painting, but if you look over to the left, you can see that painting kind of up in the corner. I'll, I'll pop it up real quick. Yeah. Okay. So this is something that I had painted a few years ago. I didn't like it. And then I recently added the night jasmine, which is a flower local to down south where I'm from. And so is this image. And my father said, uh, I want that. And I was like, well, you're going to have to wait because I'm going to put it up next year at the library. I have a, a show like a, um, I get to put my stuff on display. Um, uh, real quick, I messed up really bad, so you're going to see me do all this stuff. It doesn't make sense. You're right, it doesn't. I was mixing up some different images from my childhood, so I had to later go back, erase it, and start over. But anyway, um, but anyway, but I told my dad, like, oh, you can't have this because I'm going to be have my stuff on display for a couple of months. Well, my dad's birthday's coming up, and <laughs> truth be told, I really, really prefer to enjoy things like today, right now, in the moment. You know, it's probably one of the reasons I love painting because I can just go into the moment. And that's why I'm doing voiceovers. If I talk too much while I'm painting, I just can't do both. I can't uh, forget that there's an audience. I can't forget that I'm recording. I, I, this is such a sacred time. And this entire 11 minute and four second video was actually like about six hours, I think. It was maybe between four, six hours, something like that total. But this painting is just... It's art that is inspired by another art project that I had worked on a long time ago. My dad wants it. His birthday's coming. I'm putting a care package together for him, and he is getting that painting uh, that I have worked on, you know, technically over the past few years. Now, my art abilities in some ways have gotten better. In some ways, they have not. One of my main problems recording when I paint is pretty much everything a little bit left center. No, not left center. Right center. Uh, about where the cabin is on the boat from there off to the right I can't see because the light is glaring so from my view I cannot see it <laughs> but in order for me to be able to let you guys be able to see it I can't see it so um this project I really should have just I should have quit because I messed up over and over and over but I'm a painter right and so that's what I do so I just I just keep painting you know and sometimes I think Bob Ross, what would you do right now? Happy little accidents. I'm like, oh yeah. And he, you know, watching him all through my childhood as an adult, uh, fall asleep watching Bob Ross when I learned how to find him on YouTube. Channeling Bob Ross, you know, a lot of it is about just kind of playing around in the moment, you know, and letting energy inside of myself come out of myself as an extension. Now here you can see I had had to paint over all those mechanisms on the boat and I had to go google because I forgot <laughs> and I realized I was getting just different things going on mixed up confused and it didn't make sense but now it makes sense but here's the thing this does not really look like a shrimp boat I don't know what this is like a tuggy tuggy shrimp I don't know with a side of sunshine because that is the morning sun in the background where I'm from the sun rises out on the water and I like when the shrimp boats kind of are hanging out in that space out in the water when I was a child I loved it I would just stare off at the boats I could stare at them for hours I loved it I was thinking about Bob Ross and how he bangs his uh his paintbrush you know did it did it did it did it you know and I do that and I get paint things flung everywhere there's paint all over the window and the wall now I had that song in my head and paint flickered on the carpet and the bed and all over me all the time you ever see me out in the world and you're like is that Dawn Reynolds from YouTube? <laughs>
Okay, I'm not ever gonna say that again, I swear. Um, but seriously, like, look at my right leg and see if I'm covered in paint. They do not have paint all down the right side of them. It's not me. But if they do, it might be me. It might be some other weirdo that likes to paint and get paint all over themselves. I was looking at all this, you know, and I was kind of smiling because for a long, long time, I didn't have paint everywhere. I forgot for the longest time that I'm a painter. I totally forgot. You know, and I was thinking about that. And I was thinking, do I know anybody else that used to love to paint? But today, I don't ever see them with paint on their hands and their arms. Literally right now, we've been out goofing off and I have paint all over me because I was painting this morning. Do I know anybody, you know, they don't even have a nook in their house somewhere where they like to do crafts that's kind of messy, kind of sloppy. It's like a place to just be free to make a mess, you know? It just makes me sad thinking about it because for the longest time I gave up all my artistic hobbies. And in a way, it's kind of good because then when I came back into it, it's kind of like, I, I like to say that my creativity was doing push-ups <laughs> while I was trying to ignore it, trying to suppress it. But I had other things I had to do. I really did. But I really need to get uh, that part of me exercised more often where I stop, drop, and I do art. I create. I paint. Um, and uh, along the grooves and the lines of the things that I want to manifest with myself and with the people around me. And that's going to be... Uh, I, would, I would hope it's positive, authentic positivity. I keep hearing about toxic positivity. I'm like, what is that? Do I even know what that is? It changes or I don't because I'm literal minded and I don't always understand uh, what everybody's talking about. The things that they say go over my head, it's funny. If people say things and they're like, it's going over her head. She doesn't understand. But then I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've thought the same things about these people that think this about me. And I'm thinking something, I'm trying to say something, and they're not getting it. And I'm just like, wow, you know, they don't even realize how much stuff goes over their heads, too. And it just makes me think about how we all really do have thinking uh, processes. I think thinking processing abilities is just different. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and when people say to me, wow, you really overthink things. You're overthinking, quit overthinking. How much, how much less or more acceptable or equally acceptable would it be if my response was, well, it's not my fault that you underthink, you know? Like, I notice a lot, friend, you know, whenever we talk about things and do things, you really tend to underthink things. <laughs> you know? Like, you know, you could be a little bit more vigilant and less uh, traumatic to other people if you were just, you know, if you would just overthink a little more because you're, you're, your ability to underthink is, wow, it's actually something to be admired, but it's just not what I want, you know? Oh, and by the way, you might want to cut out a space in your home, a little nice area where you can be unapologetically messy because you seem wound a little tight and that might help you a little bit. <laughs> and then move along now, move along. I knew I was wound real tight a few months back. I, I get on these things where I kind of figured out because the Blue Jays were driving me bonkers. And, uh, and today, uh, this morning, they were squawking up a storm. I had the window open outside, and uh, they were squawking and squawking and squawking. I had to learn to make peace with the Blue Jays. It wasn't their fault. It was because our neighbors were always feeding them. But they live in the tree outside of my window, and that's not their fault. So now when they squawk, I literally stop everything I'm doing, and I just go outside, and I feed them, and I just, I just move on after that. They might be really loud, but, you know, I'm loud. I'm loud. Well, you know what? They're actually really beautiful. They're pretty amazing. And here, I'm about to <laughs> have a talk with them. What? I see you. I see you. I see you. Yes, I see you. I can hear you, and you want pecans, and I know, and I see you. Yes. Goodness gracious. All right, John, hold on. Okay, I went and I fed him some pecans. And anyways, he just kept walking because then his friends came and they wanted to. You know what I had really wanted to talk about while I was painting is um, unmasking. And I, I got to redo a unmasking video. I know I do. I just don't really want to. I want to paint. <laughs> um, but I will say that I've noticed um, whenever I'm trying to find refuge with people that um, allow me to be myself. Um, like, for example, me posting this video. This is one of my videos because I love fan videos. Yes, I do. I chill out. I kick back. I love my own reflection of my own fan in my picture over there, too. But, um, you know, when people just give all these things thumbs down, it's just kind of weird because it's like, hey, it's my channel, you know, with my things that I like and everything. I'm over here trying to unmask. But I was trying to find refuge with certain people that really seemed like they were trying to convince other people to unmask. 
But then I noticed somebody would ask a question and they would get like attacked or get their stuff screenshotted and they would get ridiculed by this group because they asked a simple question. And instead of using these opportunities to help educate people, help them learn, people that were trying to find similar people to me, meet us where we are and ask questions and everything, they got attacked. I do not believe there's ever such thing as a stupid question. And look, I really do. I sit back and add my fan videos. These are my fan videos going on in the background while I paint so I can chew. But if somebody wants you to unmask, but then they try to tell you how to think, feel, whatever, they're not really helping you unmask. Look at this painting, though. This is pretty cool. I like my little shrimp. I was thinking about how I feel like as I try to unmask, I go up against other people similar to me that try to gaslight me out of unmasking because it's not what they want other people to do. And I'm just like, wow, that is so inflexible. All right, anyway, I gotta hop off here. I gotta go send this package to my dad with the other painting, and I'm gonna hang this one up on my wall. I love my shrimp. Hey, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of how you can draw that shrimp. It's not me, but it's really cool.